Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is TJ and today I'm going to walk you through the prepare version 5 settings. I have been recently asked a lot about my settings and thus I want to share with you a quick video on the settings I can recommend for you guys. Um, first of all, I want to say that today we are only covering three aspects which, which are first of all the prepare 3D settings itself. Then we're going to have a look at the config file and last but not least we also have a quick look at the nvidia control panel there are of course many more settings to consider basically um, regarding every single add-on add -on we are running but i feel like those three aspects are the most important ones to get your sim running uh, pretty smooth so that's why, why we are focusing on these ones today and also i should mention i am running prepare version 5.1 including the hotfix one um, recently there have been a lot of small updates regarding the sim and I can only recommend to go for the newest one so if you have not installed the 5.1 update or the hotfix one then definitely go for it it does make the sim run smoother and nicer and better so here we are in the prepare 3d settings and when we are talking about settings we are basically only focusing on the display tab the world tab and the lighting tab all the other ones are basically to your own liking and does not really affect the performance of the sim that's why we are going to focus on these ones today okay so up here you can see i'm running the geforce rtx 2070 super which have uh, has eight gigabytes of vram and i'm mentioning this since vram became excessively important uh, with the new sim um, but i'm going to talk a bit more about this later on so first of all let's start down here image and texture quality fxaa definitely turn it off uh, there's no point in turning it on it just makes the edges and the sim appear very weird and yeah definitely turn it off anti-aliasing this basically comes down to your graphics card i do recommend to try to run it as high as possible so i figured for my settings um four times SSAA is doing quite well in terms of the looks of the sim and it does not make too much of a difference stepping up to eight times uh, but it saves a lot of performance so yeah basically if, if you don't get any satisfying FPS with uh, four times then step slowly upwards until you get some nice FPS you can live with in your sim texture filtering I've just put this to 16 times I think it uh, makes the sim look better and I couldn't figure out any impact on the performance so that's why I recommend just run it on the highest setting dynamic texture streaming I've ticked this one since it does reduce your VRAM usage a little bit and since VRAM is yeah as I've mentioned the constraining part uh, in these settings here um, I do recommend to to tick it uh, it does save you a little bit of VRAM and also speaking about VRAM texture resolution is one of the major uh, settings which impacts re uh, VRAM usage so you can see I'm running on the high settings um, I think on the like normal graphics card let me let me say it like this it makes no sense running 4k um, you really really need a very powerful graphic card to do it and I feel like medium is also looking quite well and it is very useful um, let's say being at very very big sceneries airport sceneries um, then it might sometimes be useful to dial it down to medium which I think is perfectly fine for flying uh, yeah flying with good looks but it does save you a lot of VRAM but then again I'm trying to get the best looks I can so I typically run it on high as long as I don't get any VRAM crashes so frame rates uh, that topic has been discussed a lot and it really comes down to your own computer so i urge you to try different settings i recently i switched over to really limiting the frame rates to 40 in the sim i know that many people say never limit the frame rates in the sim but instead in the nvidia control panel and i know that's a very valid way of doing this i however recently found that these settings are really working well for me so i'm running this one um, if you are running or if you do want to limit your fps in the nvidia settings just put it all the way up uh, make it unconstrained and then will be handled through the nvidia control panel however i'm gonna leave it as it is for now since it's really running well 
um, yeah, variable re refresh rate and wide view, that's not really applicable to me. MIP map virtual cockpits, um, I know I think many people run them on. For me, it doesn't work at all. Somehow, um, it really, the panels become very blurry if I turn them on. So that's why I've turned it off. It, if it does look nicer for you, then I recommend you do run it on. All right, over to the world tab. So level of detail radius. Um, and that's of course, yeah, sometimes it becomes very, uh, very useful to mess with it. I feel like running it on the high gives enough um, level of detail on the ground flying an airliner, especially now with enhanced atmospherics enabled. And there's any, you can anyway not see as far as to, to actually see the, the level of detail radius. If they are perfectly clear skies, then you might see in the distance uh, where it sort of stops. Uh, then setting it to ultra might help. Um, on the other hand, flying into very heavily populated areas, for example, flying into New York, this might be a bit of a constraint to your computer. So you might want to consider to dial it down a little bit flying into very heavily populated areas. Tessellation factor, I've just running it high. I, I really, I, I tried different settings, but I couldn't find any difference in terms of looks and also in terms of performance. So yeah, I don't know. I can't say too much about it. I'm just running it on high. Uh, mesh resolution and texture resolution. That's close to the highest settings. Um, I think mesh on two meters is perfectly fine. And also textures really, I, dialing it all the way up, I couldn't see any difference in, in terms of the image quality. So. I don't want to be too harsh on my Ricky. I know that some scenery developers urge you to run it on seven centimeters, um, but I found it to work quite well with, with 15. Really make sure that you have high re resolution terrain textures enabled. Um, otherwise, you can cannot really use the high resolution terrain textures, which all the add-ons provide you with. Yes, water detail, that's really not too crucial. It also doesn't affect the performance of the sim too much. I'm just running it on medium. And I have bathymetry enabled since I kind of look uh, like the looks of it. Um, but other than that, I'm not really focusing too much on the re reflections on the water. That's why I'm not going too crazy here. Special effect, just put it all the way up. Um, there's no impact on performance at all in my, my opinion. And for some add-ons, for example, if you are running the INI builds dynamic lighting configs. Uh, you really need the need those on high. So I do recommend to set those to high. Scenery complexity. I'm running very dense. Um, this is always dependent on your airport scenery. Some developers want you to run it on the extremely dense setting. Ideally, you would adjust it um, for every single airport you are flying to. However, I find this much too complicated. So. Um, that's why I'm really running it just here and it, it works per perfectly fine. And then all the other settings over here as well. This comes down to your computer. If you feel like um, your computer can't handle it, then do dial it down a bit. Um, for me, vegetation is always um, more important than buildings for some reason. For my, for many people, it might be the other way around. Um, yeah, so I, I urge you to try to find your, your sweet spot here and see what you like and what your computer can handle. Then, of course, talking about enhanced atmospherics, it is the new future of the sim and many people are not using it yet. I can only recommend to use it. I think it makes the sim look much nicer and much more realistic. So that's why I'm using it. Um, it is heavy on VRAM. That's true. Cloud resolution, however, I feel like between high, ultra and medium, the appearance is not too crazily different. So all clouds look pretty much the same but it does save you a lot of VRAM. So if you are at the scenery loading in and there's a lot of clouds and you're running into VRAM trouble, just dial it down one notch and you will see it will definitely help your VRAM quite a lot. And then you should be on the safe side. God rays, I have them disabled since they are currently not running really smooth. Um, I hope this will be fixed soon. Yeah, all the other visual effects I have enabled here. So um, yeah, that's what it looks like. All right, then last but not least, the lighting tab. Um, 
I do use HDR and I think for many new add-ons it's kind of useful to do it. Just for me, Bloom, I, I took it really far down since otherwise, um, yeah, you get two crazy uh, white colors on the sim in my opinion. So that's why I found this one, but it might depend on your display as well on your monitor. So uh, try to find your own settings here. Dynamic reflections uh, on medium for some airports, for example, for the Latin BFR airports, it makes a bit of difference. Other than that, I could not really make out any great difference regarding this one. And then dynamic lighting, very important for, for nighttime flying, of course. And yeah, shadows, very important to me, also comes down to personal preference, uh, in my opinion, uh, super important. So that's why I've ticked a lot of boxes here, just not the shadow flag content. Um, if I tick this one and the sim goes totally crazy. Um, and yeah, I run into, into really FPS problems. But other than that, I try to enable as many as I can, since I th just think it makes the uh, world look more realistic. Therefore, I have not dialed this one up too crazy. So draw distance minimum is perfectly fine being on the ground and also flying around. I mean, um, sometimes over the ocean, when there are a couple of clouds around, you can see that the clouds in the distance do not produce shadows anymore. Then you might want to dial it up too high. But other than that, Medium is perfectly fine and also in shadow quality. Um, I feel like medium is doing the job. Um, if you feel like your shadow textures are too blocky, blocky, then tie them up a little bit. All right, and that's already it in the prepare 3D config. So let's head over to the config file. All right, so here we are in the config file. Um, for those of you guys who are not really sure what this is, um, just Google for it. There's uh, this is basically where all the settings of Prepare3D are stored and you can also adjust every single parameter in here. Also add new ones. Uh, there's plenty of possibilities. However, I really do recommend um, start off with a clean config file. Do not mess around with it too much. Um, yeah, really just, just see if your sim runs well with the standard settings and if you feel like there's something not working out for you, then you can change it but don't change too much at once. Currently, I really only have two things changed. Uh, first of all, it's the max point and max spotlights. Um, I think on default it's 200 and I've dialed it w up to 1000 and that's simply because of the iNibles dynamic lighting config files, which I'm using. Uh, they do recommend it to put it up and that's the very simple reason why I have done it. And then the second, second uh, thing I've changed are the uh, shadow texture sizes, uh, which are much smaller on default. And I've set them both to 2048. Uh, makes textures appear less blocky and nicer. So that's something I really put a lot of attention on and that's why I've changed it. But yeah, that's really the only two changes I've done so far in my current setting. All right, and then last but not least, we are in the NVIDIA control panel. Um, first of all, I should mention that I can only speak for NVIDIA graphic cards. I've never tried an AMD graphics card before. So if you have a different developer, different producer, then this might be totally different for you guys. Um, but for those of you running a NVIDIA graphics card, there's uh, one thing I can really, really recommend. And I think it's basically the most important thing you should ever change uh, running the simulator. Um, sorry, this is all in German now, but uh, I think just from the looks of it, it should look very similar in every other language. So uh, you should find it quite well. So if you are in the global settings for the uh, 3D programs, um, there's something called uh, energy mode, uh, whatever that would be in English. And there are different options here. And make very, very sure that you are on the maximum energy mode. Otherwise, the graphic cards might be trying to save some energy. And this, I found out that this is really, really heavily impacting the sim. So if this is not on this setting, then my uh, FPFs drop very low. So I do recommend to put it to the highest setting here. If you don't want to put it on the global setting, then you can also go into the um, program setting and do it just for prepare 3D. And I've done the same thing over here. So maximum performance. Also speaking, speaking about the graphics card, um, I recommend to keep 
the drivers up to date. Uh, so really go into your GeForce Experience app and update the drivers whenever there's an update. And then after you update, always go back to the control panel and check if the settings are still here. Sometimes they do change after a driver update. So then just put them up again. Uh, very, very important for your sim. All right, guys, and that's it on the um, very basic settings and prepare 3D. Uh, please comment below if you have any further questions or if you want to see any other settings from me. I'm very happy to share them and I hope you get your simulator running smooth and nicely. Take care.